Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Great to be here with you today. As always, celebrating our weekends with the Cabral House Calls, being able to take a little time out from the typical everyday show that we do on one topic about integrative health every Monday through Thursday, we do our Anything Goes Friday review, and then, of course, answering at least a half a dozen questions per day, Saturday and Sunday. So 12 questions or more answered on the weekends. That is my goal. That's what I try to do. And we've been doing it now for, I guess, four years or so. So, you know, love the process, really. That's what it's all about. That's what I talk about a lot on my Motivation and Mindset Mondays is just the process. You know, every single weekend I go into, well, essentially a new set of shows every week. I don't always even know what all those shows are going to turn into quite yet. I just have a list of topics that I know our community is interested in. I see a lot of comments. I see a lot of questions around them. And then, of course, on the weekend shows... And just as I'm doing right now, opening up my Word document, my Pages document, because I use a Mac, and looking at all of the questions that my team has assembled. So these are questions. They're not in any particular order. They're simply, I should say, they're in a particular order. They're in the order of first come, first served. So for example, today we're answering questions from July 20th. So we're in August right now. We're about six weeks behind to getting your question. That's the typical you know, range. I've been as far back as 12 weeks when questions have really just tons of questions have come in. And when less questions come in, we sometimes get to four or five weeks out. So just know if you've asked a question on the Ask Cabral page, well, your question will be answered in the order that it comes in in about six weeks time. So we are up to July 20th. If you asked your question before July 20th, well, it was answered on a previous weekend host call. That's about it. What I want to do right now is spend our time answering your questions. So without further ado, I'm going to dive right in if you're new to the podcast. On the weekends, we answer our community's questions. And really, I'm going to probably refer a lot of people back so I can answer more and more questions. If I've already answered the question, I feel like I'm not going to do it again. I really not. And not just because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't appreciate the question. Of course I do. But the goal is to be able to answer as many questions as possible, build up this giant library of answers, and then be able to just refer back to it, which is at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And then there's a search bar. And then there's also graphics along the top of different show topics. So feel free to check that out. Without further ado, let's dive into our first question. First question today is from Jenna. Jenna says, I can't not believe the crazy side effects I get from a B-complex. I experience racing and irrational thoughts, insomnia, anxiety, irritability, dizziness, and even a tingling sensation in my brain. It contains methyl B12 and methylfolate, which I thought was supposed to be easier for the body to assimilate. But there has to be something going on where my body can't handle the B vitamins. Additionally, my urine is bright yellow when taking them, but I understand this to be normal. I'm deficient in B12 as shown on my oat test, so I'd love your recommendations to what to supplement with and also why this could be occurring. Thank you. All right, Jenna, thank you for writing in. And you wrote in on July 20th. Now, right after you asked this question, I started producing podcasts on methylation. So it was on episode 1621. So go to stephencabral.com forward slash 1621. And then also check out 1621. Are you over methylating? And then also on 1628. So there you go. And those were basically recorded just before you wrote in. So it sounds like what you're going through potentially could be an issue, not necessarily with a B12, but with a a methylfolate, even though it's a, well, potentially, I don't know if you're using ours, but if you are using ours, ours is a lower dose methylfolate. This typically helps with these issues that you may be having with a methylation-based issue. Again, I go deep on these two podcasts about that. It's going to answer your questions for sure on this. And uh, in the meantime, what you can do is you can simply use the, the daily nutritional support 
I have to state this on the podcast. This podcast is not to be used for medical advice. I'm not diagnosing disease. I'm not providing treatment protocols. And I am not providing any cures. Okay. There's my disclaimer. And what I would say is this. Definitely listen to those two podcasts, 1621 and 1628. That's going to give you 50 minutes of deep explanation as to how and why we need to be able to process B vitamins. And what you might want to look into is simply a liquid methylcobalamin. You could dose it for the right amount that you would like. We have one right over at uh, equilibriumnutrition.com. But of course, um, you could purchase from your favorite functional medicine-based provider. And you can also check out my podcast on B12 because there's uh, adenosylcobalamin, there is uh, hydroxy, and then there's also methyl cobalamin. And cobalamin is just the, the B12. So you can go back and you can also check out my show on the different versions of B12 and how they're all not created the same. All right, Jenna, hopefully that helps. Ambrit is up next. After doing a hair tissue mineral analysis, I was advised by one of your health coaches to take zinc picolinate. Currently doing the CBO finisher, and the healthy gut support contains 15 milligrams of zinc. Should I stop taking picolinate? In the meantime, I know taking too much zinc can be dangerous. Totally understand what you're saying. And what we recommend, so our, our health coaches are going to give you those proper recommendations. Typically, you're taking zinc on top of your already your protocol that you're already using. So do keep in mind that the health coaches look at your total program, understand what's in all of those products, and then make the best recommendations for you. So we often go up to 50 milligrams per day for about 12 weeks time to restore a lot of those zinc base levels, sometimes four months. And the max we usually go up to is 75 milligrams. And that might be just for like three weeks or so while someone is battling a cold or virus or whatever it might be. So there you go. Your DNS is going to have your daily nutritional support. It's going to be right around 15 milligrams. And you can get some for sure in your CBO finisher. And then also 15 milligrams if you're taking the balanced zinc, if you're taking the zinc picolinate, it's usually 25 milligrams. You know, again, I don't have your protocol in front of me. I would definitely, if you're a private a wellness client, then I would I would ask the coach for sure because um, remember, like our coaches are world class. Before someone even gets on the phone with you, have to have gone through IHP level one and IHP level two if they're on our team, and then when they get on our team, they're typically doing six weeks of not even working with anyone, just going through case studies and talking with me on the phone um, twice a week, talking with our health director more than twice a week and listening to all the different cases. And then, you know, so there's so much that goes into this and that's why they're your best bet. But just keep in mind the 50 milligrams for typical, you know, that's the max. So some people might just you do 15 milligrams a day and that's great for them, right? Someone like me, I'll do 15 in the shake, but then I typically do another 15 to 25 a day. That's what works really well for my body. So I hover around 40 milligrams or so per day, every day, but that's what's right for my body. Okay. Patrick's up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. Huge fan. My son is 14 and had brain tumor removed three years ago. I was wondering what would be a good test for his health? Well, I did answer this last week. So you must have written in twice. So just check out last week's and you'll see what that answer was. All right, Priscilla's up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. Thank you so much for all that you do for our health community. You've changed my life. I've dealt with autoimmune diseases for many years. I've Hashimoto's. I've seen many specialists for my condition trying to feel better. Since I've started listening to your podcast, my health has been much improved. I've done your CBO protocol and many of your detoxes. I'm 39 years old. And my husband and I want to get pregnant. I'm in the process of seeking a fertility specialist to get ovarian function and hormone levels tested. I think I'm premenopausal. I'm starting to get hot flashes the last year or so, and my menstrual cycle has been irregular. What can I do to improve my chances of getting pregnant and help with my fertility? Truly appreciate you. Priscilla, thank you for writing in. One way to make sure that your fertility level is at its best is to run the big five. So hands down, check out the omega-3s, check out the gut-based function, check out the hormones, all of those things. Now, you might say to yourself, well, I can really only do one. Okay, totally get it. I mean, believe me, my job is to help you. So if you say I can only run one lab, I say, all right, understood. Let's do, let's make sure you've done that 21-day detox. Let's make sure that you've done a heavy metal detox for sure. Let's make sure that you're not bloated. All those issues are taken care of. Good. Okay. Now let's use the daily foundational protocol level two or level three every day. Okay. So now we're getting our nutrients taken care of and we'll want to add in what's called the methyl folate on top of that. And you can just find that again at equilibriumnutrition.com, right? So it's, that's where all these things are. So 
And that's pretty straightforward, right? Daily Foundation Protocol Level 2 or Level 3 plus the methylfolate. And then after your first trimester, or at least by your second, I would add in two to three tablets a day of a good quality food-based iron. Okay. And that's that's on um, the same website. Okay. So now what you want to do is if you can only run one lab, you're going to run the stress hormones, mood, and metabolism test. That's going to look at thyroid, cortisol, DHEA, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, etc. It's an amazing test. Now, the caveat is you want to run it about days 19 to 21 of your cycle if you have a 28-day cycle. So about seven days to nine days before your cycle. And that's simply going to be peak progesterone. That's what we're looking for, peak progesterone. And so what we'll do is we'll look at everything. If DHEA is low, well, that's not going to be able to support estrogen well enough, right? And certainly not going to be able to support its balance or cortisol and progesterone because those on the other side of the steroidal hormone pathway. So we would use things, again, along with your consent, of course, right? Because this is your body. We use all natural things, but it's your body and it's always your choice. So what we would do is we would calm the cortisol levels if they're too high. We would rebalance, help to rebalance healthy thyroid levels. We'd look at blood sugar. We'd look at DHEA. And we'd also look at making sure progesterone is still strong, which is typically one of the first sex hormones to go in women. So that's what we do. Again, if you want to run all the tests, the big five is the way to go. If you can only run one, it's the stress hormone mood and metabolism test. And then you get your plan from there. Thank you for writing in Priscilla. Beth's up next. Hello. Thanks for all your amazing work. I'm a newly qualified health coach and I'm so thankful every day for your knowledge you share because it really helps me with my clients. My question is, I get very lightheaded when gas comes up. It probably happens a couple times a day, but sometimes I have to hold on to something to steady myself. What do you think could cause this and why does it happen when I burp? I'm 43, above average fitness, 140 pounds, healthy diet. I know I've always been naturally low blood pressure, don't know what it is currently, and very low heart rate, often goes below 40 if I'm still working. Are these low markers anything to worry about? All right, thank you, Beth, for writing in. So what I do whenever I see these questions, I'm literally looking at them for the first time, so I'm not going back, I'm not researching all of the different things that put, could potentially be there, right? Because we're also not providing diagnoses on this show. What I'd like to say, you know, right away, what jumps out at me is, is something called bradycardia. And what that typically means is a, a very low heart rate. You know, someone that has a low heart rate, let's say, like you in the 40s, right? So you could have a low heart rate in the 40s if you're a endurance-based athlete, et cetera. When I used to run cross country back in the day, my heart rate was in the high 40s. It's not in the high 40s anymore. Typically, it's in, let's say, the mid 50s to upper 50s. Certainly not an endurance athlete, nothing even close, but it's a good heart rate for me. Anywhere, typically, I like to have people that I work with, their heart rate in the 60s, well, 50s or 60s is totally fine. I understand if it's in the 40s for a specific reason. But if you're not an endurance athlete, I would just make sure that you, well, first, that you're not on any medications that's causing this to go low. Some Sometimes when you're on blood pressure medications or other meds, it could certainly go lower. You definitely want to make sure that you don't have an arrhythmia, which could cause this lower heart rate as well. You know, I don't think sleep apnea is necessarily at play, but certainly it could have something to do with it. I don't think that it's necessarily going to affect you during the day. Well, at least it shouldn't. I've never seen any research around that. And then also um, issues around thyroid could potentially cause this as well, cause uh, all sorts of issues. So what I would say is this. Let's make sure the thyroid's good. Let's make sure cortisol's good too. We certainly don't want super, super low levels of cortisol. And neurotransmitters look good. That's something I would look at. Look at the heart arrhythmia. Make sure you're not on any medications because all of these things could cause the lightheadedness, dizziness. Uh, simply this. I mean, you could just, when you're about to burp, you kind of hold your breath for a second and you just could get lightheaded from that But because it's combined with the lower heart rate and lower blood pressure. So, you know, again, not a diagnosis for sure, but hopefully that leads you in the right direction with your continued health journey, right? Because we're all on this health journey. We're simply trying to get better. I'm going to share with you in a few weeks. I was dealing with dizzy spells for almost three weeks. And I said, what is going on here? You know, what is going on here? It was the uh, beginning of the summer. I'll explain that on an upcoming podcast. It's all gone now. Figured out what it was. But again, we're all in this continuous journey. It's not like every day for me is like absolutely perfect. Yeah, I mean, the majority of days are great. Every once in a while, some strange thing comes up, right? That's kind of like our body, right? Our, our, that's our body. That's the machine. And the machine needs to be tuned up. We need to figure out what's going on with it from a constant basis. Believe it or not, mine ended up being a strange 
strange food sensitivity, the strangest, strangest thing. Had never had it before, but you know what? Food sensitivities can develop over time. I developed one, didn't even know I had it. I blamed it on caffeine and coffee. I blamed it on a bunch of different things and realized um, through, again, changing variables. That's I practiced what I preach and figured out it was a food sensitivity. So again, like, I don't know, probably in my life, once a year, something random comes up like that. Um, probably maybe nothing happened the year before. Two years ago, I had on the nerve entrapment, and that was unbelievable. I've shared that story before. But again, that well, how long did that take? Well, it took about three months to recover from that. Uh, it didn't stop my life, but certainly stopped a lot of the exercises I wanted to do. And then um, learn more about it, you know, really got educated on how to rehab from on the nerve entrapment. It's almost like carpal tunnel, but it's up above the elbow. And now that's never come back in two years. So again, we're all in this health journey, right? We're all figuring this out together. I always say this. I mean, I always say this. There's always an answer. That's the bottom line. There's always an answer. We just have to keep searching. That's it. All right. Michael's up next. Greetings. I have a 16-year-old active son that has been struggling with his weight for several years. He is a three-sport varsity athlete, works out constantly, and has difficulty shedding weight. I'm guessing that he has some sort of hormone imbalance. Is this something you could help with? If you could let me know, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Mike, thank you for writing in. I would agree with you. Your son is a three-sport athlete, works out all the time, difficulty shedding weight. Let me just throw out a few things because I was in high school before as well. And the diet of a lot of guys or just high school kids, teenagers in general, a lot of processed food, going out with your buddies, eating pizza, going out with your friends, drinking. I was drinking like iced tea after school. I thought that was like back then. I thought that was like even a healthier thing. No, it was loaded with sugar, right? I was drinking all those, what are they, Snapples? I was drinking Snapples. I was drinking, not Lipton iced teas. What's the other one? It's got like that green label on it with a little bamboo tree. I was drinking that, Arizona. There we go. Arizona iced teas, Snapples. Before that, I was drinking like Mountain Dew, which is like my favorite beverage ever. Of course, I haven't had one in a couple decades, but uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't probably enjoy that taste today. So this is what we need to do. We need to make sure that he's not eating processed foods, that he's fueling his body like an athlete. So what I would do, because the way that I got motivated and kept learning is like I looked at other athletes because I wanted to be an athlete. And so I just kept getting my body to be more like an athlete. I would look at what bodybuilders ate and then I would do that too. I would look at what athletes did for a regimen and I would do that too. I actually started going to bed earlier because that's what a lot of bodybuilders and athletes did. They needed their rest. So um, try to get them into the lifestyle and then for sure I would run, well I mean if you can, Michael, I would run the big five. Like no doubt about it because he could have gut dysfunction, leading to inflammation, lower omega-3s, food sensitivities, holding a lot of water weight that way. And then of course at 16 years old, no no doubt about it, he could run that stress hormones, mood and metabolism test, which is part of the big five as well. So Mike, I'd love to see you helping your son. You're an amazing dad and keep on keeping on. All right. Keep on. You'll figure it out. There's no doubt about it. All right. Let's get in one more quick question. Laura is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball and everyone. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on dynamic neural retraining system. It's supposed to be a natural drug-free neuroplasticity based program that helps with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, food sensitivities, anxiety, POTS, and many other stress-related limbic system impairments. It supposedly directly targets brain function and maladapted stress response. They say they rewire the limbic system. I've been listening to your podcast for months now and really trust your judgment and scientific approach. So I hope that you can shed some light on this and if it is something to look into for someone with more of these conditions. Thank you so much and have an amazing day, everyone. All right, Laura, thank you for writing in. It's funny because I was actually talking about the dynamic neural retraining system the other day. It's something that I would probably look more into myself, but I don't want to use crude analogies. But let's see. There's multiple ways to attack a problem, right? And so one of the big issues with chronic fatigue, uh, multiple chemical sensitivities, fibromyalgia, POTS, anxiety, is the body's worn out. It's totally and utterly worn out. It's exhausted. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's what I was. I was stressed out. I was anxious my senior year of high school, all these different things. And my body followed suit and I was wiped out. I've given, I've given you already all the science behind this, especially if you join the IntegrativeHealthPractitioner.org program, whether educational or health coach wise, I go into how POTS even comes about. I still to this day cannot understand why medical doctors 
just don't look at how when the body's stressed, it raises cortisol or mineral corticoids like aldosterone. The body preferentially holds on to sodium, depletes potassium. Once the stress response is gone, the body then just depletes that sodium base levels. And before you know it, you're wiped out of your sodium potassium and you're dealing with irregular heart rate, arrhythmias, POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, etc. So, I mean, again, there's always an answer, right? There's always an answer. The problem is, I mean, it's a great thing and it's a bad thing, right? We have amazing specialists in the world, like brilliant cardiologists, brilliant brain surgeons, all these people, but they're not enough of a generalist. You also have to be holistic. Generalist sometimes gets a bad connotation, but honestly, you want a doctor that is a generalist. You want a doctor or a practitioner that knows not a little bit, but a good amount about a lot of different things. You want to know how the body works together. So getting back to your question, you can do biofeedback. You could do neuro-linguistic reprogramming or programming with uh, hypnosis. You could do emotional freedom technique. You could do dynamic neural retraining system. You could do neurofeedback, not just biofeedback. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I have not been through dynamic neural retraining system. If anybody's listening to this from dynamic neural retraining system, send us an email, send us a contact. We will check out the program. We might, you know, recommend it more for sure. But, you know, so here's the thing. I've heard people getting good results from it. So, Lara, can I recommend this to you? I don't know it specifically. However, I have looked into it. I've looked at their website and I agree with a lot of it. So what I would say is I think this is one more modality to get you more into that parasympathetic nervous system to calm the limbic side of the brain. And I think you could get a lot of benefit from this. So again, I'm a huge fan of biofeedback. I'm a huge fan of neurofeedback. I'm a huge fan of meditation, of reframing your thinking, NLP, all sorts of working with great practitioners and dynamic neural retraining system could be one of those. So Laura, thank you for writing in. And I would say it's probably a green light on that. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into the show. I appreciate you. I'm telling you, the time flies. I love being able to answer your questions. I uh, really do. So please do come back tomorrow. We'll talk more about your questions and hopefully provide you with some answers that will be helpful. Today's questions were all available at stephencabral.com forward slash 1653. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.